Yo, are you ready for the Astro Weather Week? October 14th, 15th, 16th, and the Aries Super Full Moon on the 17th? Let's talk about it. Libra season. Pew. Grand Rising, good people. It's Eric Taylor, Big E Astrology. How was your weekend? Hope you had a good one. Ah, definitely uh, happy my, my boys won their football game 40 to nothing. They're now 2-2 two and two on the season. Mateus had a sack and a couple of tackles. Jackson had like 30 yards rushing. Um, two fumble recoveries, a bunch of tackles. I was definitely a proud papa and uh, got to connect with my amazing friend and had her and her husband over for dinner, Miss Debbie Solaris, hanging out with her. The galactic guru, as I like to call her, the galactic historian, um, just an angel. She'll be coming back on either end of December or early January back on the podcast. So the moon is in Pisces. We know the world is in... Um, some interesting times. It's at 12 degrees as we're doing this, 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Eastern. We'll come out a little bit later, but you know that's the time we're looking at and when I'm recording. And um, <clears throat> Lisa, Libra season is uh, you know wi winding down. We're in that third deacon. Thursday, the super full moon will be at 24 degrees. We are now in the Libra Gemini deacon. So. This is, if you have this, one, make sure you reach out before the sale ends and hit me up, eric at bigeastrology.com. Take advantage of the Libra birth chart sale for all Libra sun, moon, and rising signs. Whether you get a natal birth chart, solar return chart, or secondary progression chart, um, really great options. 175, normally 200, and you receive... Um, a free uh, transit reading with that or the secondary progression the big shebang normally two uh, three hundred you get it for 275 with the mini audio love chart reading and both come with videos their planetary placement so super cool and one other announcement before we get to the chart and that moon will finish up at around you know 18 degrees east coast 19 on the west coast and um, right now it's conjunct Saturn. You talking about Pisces, you don't want to miss it. This Saturday, October 19th, 12 noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, I am going to be teaching a lesson breaking down the transit of the Pisces North Node and Virgo South Node, which begins in the late afternoon of January 11th, 2025. This is about an 18 month transit. So we're talking about 25 and 26. The nodal axis, right? The, very, the nodes of karma. It's your mission, your purpose, your destiny, illusion, obsession. That's the Pisces North Node, right? We're gonna have a lot of things going on in the health access for this time. The Virgo South Node is really surrendering, releasing, purging, cutting off seeking spirituality in virgo so you look in your houses right? we're going to break down all 12 rising signs you don't want to miss this coffee talk it's going to set you right if you can't make it live you can pay the 20 dollars, receive the recording this one you you want to be there but you also want to receive it if you can't make it eric at biggieastrology.com you can pay the 20 dollars to paypal as a friend tailored ed tailored to you the number two letter you tailor to coaching at gmail.com or cash app right dollar sign big e astro that's the cash app all right so um yeah let's get to the to the to the chizzy we've got the pisces moon today and tomorrow and then we're going to get into wednesday and thursday that Aries moon okay so we'll finish up with the uh on f 
Friday, we will get into the Taurus Gemini moon weekend. Okay. So let's get to it. Astro Weather Weekly report. Hope you're doing well. We got some, some stuff going on, right? Mercury in Scorpio. We have Jupiter retrograde. Sorry, I forgot to tell you that in the last Astro Weather, October 9th. And that's time for us to reimagine and re reassess our beliefs, our communications, right? What we see or focus on and how we show up on social media, right? Expanding our knowledge and our thoughts and our input. So, you know, this is the time where you can be like, you know what, I've got to finish that book. Talking to me, right? Talking about the podcast, you know, expanding the, the guests and things like that. But this is for the collective. Start your podcast, start your book. So this is a, a, a good time, but the energies are not easy. Pluto's direct now. Um, and, you know, you're going to see a lot of things continuously to pop off political, financial, and entertainment. After November 19th, we're going to start to get some revelations about philanthropic work, charities, science, technology, the dark web, AI, right? And this guy broke it down. He's like, AI, you know, it can't be artificial and intelligent at the same time. What it really is, is just like a giant Google and it's speed, right? It's the technology is processing what has already been out there and then giving you answers, organizing it and assessing it. Chat GPT and these other things. But um, yeah, we we are bringing a lot to, I don't know if you saw with Elon Musk in LA, but these talking robots and things like that, the future is here. All right, so let's get to the chart in Astro Weather Week. Pew. All right, make it happen Monday, day of the moon. Definitely uh, woke up kind of like feeling this Pisces moon this morning. A little tired, lethargic. Don't remember my dreams, but... So, here we go. 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Eastern. Not looking at a particular ascendant, although this one is mine. Scorpio rise and... And... Yeah, well, the Mercury is now at one degrees, conjunct Humea. Humea was considered the, the, this energy, the goddess that gave birth to the eight Hawaiian islands. There could be some stuff today on the news, revelations about water, land masses, different things coming up, different food sources, and maybe different sea animals that we've never discovered. Um, just pay attention to that, you know, even with Sedna and Gemini. So as a collective with this Pluto Capricorn, but now Mercury and Venus uh, in, and you know, Venus is really only here a few more days. Right? It's basically, I believe it's Friday, going into uh, Sagittarius. We're actually late Thursday after the Aries super full moon. Um, we'll be going into Sagittarius. So, you know, pay attention to that. But this Pisces moon conjunct Saturn, you know, you could feel some restrictions, right? Maybe that's why I felt so lethargic and tired this morning. Because Saturn could restrict things about your body, even your emotions. So emotional and spiritual discipline, but healthy boundaries. Like keep a, a, a compassion and a little bit of empathy for yourself if you're running slow today. Because this is this can create like that kind of sluggish start. Um, and this is where we can see that maybe the you know, the government can be starting to help repair things um, with wires and lines down 
in uh, Tampa, St. Pete, Sarasota, you know, North Carolina, things like that. So we, we hope that that good news and of healing, you know, things get restored. Um, but I do believe Nadine is coming. Um, I'm not sure if it's the 16th, 17th, or 18th, but just keep an eye out on that. Remember I told you, <laughs> I told you after uh, Helene, there'd be two more. And, you know, I was right, Milton and, 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 and Nadine. So just, you know, think about how you are protecting your home. But there's also this energy of the Aries super full moon coming up. We have to protect the collective with our energetic field. Try to vibrate as high as we can and and don't get focused on the locus and hocus pocus no fear ignore the media in a sense of creating this like terror and chaos focus on sending love to enemies to storms to you know protection um that's doing the good work could sound corny and hokey to you maybe but really, if you think about it, you know, even the CIA has released reports, you know, that we live in this, uh, you know, this matrix and everything is electric magnetic energy. So go out there and spend some time. I'm gonna, after, after this, I'm going to go get some rays from the sun um, and integrate it into your body. It's really good to get it on the belly, on the belly button, okay? That's why you always feel healthy and well at the beach. Your feet are in the sand, you're in the ocean, the sun. It's very, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, oh, my back, I gotta stretch more, healing to the body. So like I said, it'll finish up at 18 and 19 degrees. Um, it will, you know, as you're sleeping and waking up, You'll have the conjunction of Neptune and the trine to Mars and Cancer. And as you're going to bed, you'll feel that. You'll really feel it exact probably around 6 a.m. Eastern, 3 a.m. Pacific. So, you know, Tuesday, there could be some divine energy, you know, about really stepping into taking action for whatever you need. So, you know, Libra season, happy birthday, Libra. The sun conjunct Lilith, very... Uh, instinctual today and intuitive about relationships. Um, you know, business partnerships, marriages, really trying to find that harmony and peace. And please go back and watch episode 255 with Ms. Valeria Sophia, my Knowledge is Love Astrology podcast. We were live the other night and it was really good. We broke down and she's the Venus expert and she has the Libra sun, Mercury and rising. She broke those down, but we also talked about the Libra self node and Libra season and the energy of Libra and Venus. It was a lot of fun. And she's going to come back on a January Capricorn season. We're going to talk about the humor of astrology, kind of making fun of all of our placements and energy because, you know, Capricorn season is so serious, but I think sometimes these archetypes and stereotypes, they're very real and we have to be willing to laugh at ourselves. Right. I could laugh at some of my Virgo ways. I have to, you know, because it's comedy or my Venus and Scorpio, you know, being so intense in relationships as a young man. You got to laugh at yourself, people. Um, so the nodes are still at six. They'll be moving in about a you know a few weeks or so. Um, now, pay attention to, you know, as this Pisces moon will come and square Jupiter, but not today. Uh, that'll, be, that'll be tomorrow. Um, we also, you know, are still dealing with this sextile, right? And Uranus, we're dealing with this Venus-Uranus opposition. And so you can start to feel this in terms of sudden breakups in relationships or purchasing some art or entertainment, music, culture, and concerts being canceled or needing to return a vehicle um, you know, things like that, insurance, 
but this can also be a sudden breakup in, in relationships as well. So, you know, think of it though around the values, think of it around the um, having to, if you obsess about something, you can lose it and let it go, right? And so there's always something deep to learn on any Scorpio Taurus access around being fixated, obsessed, stubborn about something and that that can create a downfall or bad situation for you in your life, whether it's in a relationship, finances, with the music, art, culture, entertainment, vehicles, um, you know, things like that. This could affect the markets, uh, stock market and crypto, things like that as well. So not much pop it off in Virgo. You know, I'm going to just give you the spiel with the Chiron. Still always a great time to heal. And i um, trying to, well, we're dealing with the, the Mars square sun energy. So you're going to feel that a lot today and tomorrow, um, even Wednesday. And so this is where we can get into some serious arguments in the home, um, issues about real estate, things about intense emotions of business partnerships. Um, and this definitely is not good for any type of peace that we want in the Middle East or anywhere in the world. So this could really escalate some things. I know they were telling the UN people to get out and Israel soldiers um, lost their lives and more Lebanese and, and different people lost their lives and back and forth today and, and yesterday and, and probably will be tomorrow. Um, I don't know, you know, I, it's, uh, it is what it is. I do know that we have got to try to really focus on sending love there and transformation to the heart, improving relationships. Okay. So let's get to Tuesday, October 15th. Wow. All right. I guess six months away from tax day, April 15th. <laughs> All right, Astro Weather for Lunes, the day of the moon. This is a psychic, intuitive moon. Also do something creative, okay? Eric Taylor, Biggie Astrology. Pew. Think about it, Tuesday, the day of Mars. <clears throat> What I'm giving you is astrological bars, 9 a.m., October 15th, Pacific, 12 noon, Eastern, the Pisces moon. Well, I told you what, it would finish up around 19, and 6 is 27, 27 degrees. So, at about... At about 6 p.m. Eastern or a little bit before, the moon will go into Aries, okay? So you'll finish out this Pisces moon and we'll get to the Aries moon, which will be for part of Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, and Thursday, okay? So <clears throat> when you're dealing with the Pisces moon conjunct Neptune, this Tuesday is the day of the planet Mars, so lift your weights, run your errands, but please take time to get into sort of leaving your physical body. This is the day to kind of escape the real 3D realm and go into the spiritual ethers and, and tap into your ancestors, your guardian angels, your higher self, your spirit guides. You know, we have access to this and with all these X-class solar flares being like off the charts, you know, you could be going through ascension syndromes, body aches and pains, but also this is also thinning the veil so that you can communicate and receive messages from your higher self, your spirit team, your guardian angels, ancestors from your Hua, okay? And so, don't be afraid of that, but at the same time, you know, 
try to, you know, take a bath, maybe a Tuesday morning or Tuesday night bath with your crystals, but get into the spiritual realms. I, I just think that that's going to be, you know, and then we're having the moon trying Venus, you know, and, and Neptune, you know, you're having that energy and this is where you can be extremely intuitive Look at your Scorpio and Pisces houses. That will tell you, you know, where. But um, you can be extremely intuitive and tapped in. And remember, the moon was also trining Mars, you know, earlier on Tuesday morning. Um, but really be tapped in and have like this. Um, how could I explain it? Like. Not only this psychic energy, but this empathic where you can you may be able to feel and Tuesday you're running errands, you're going to be uh, this energy sponge. But you can feel what others are thinking and saying. This is where all the clairs can come online, you know, and, and, and have this deep spiritual inner knowing as you're moving around on the day or tapping into different energies um, and all to be integrated and to help you. Remember, as I always say, we're not a victim in the physical realm or in the spiritual realm. Um, and this Pisces moon, you know, if you're a Pisces sun Monday and, and, you know, Monday's a good day or even part of Tuesday, do some intermittent fasting, reactivate the cells, the crystalline oil coming down from the crown chakra down to the solar plexus and root and, you know, abstain from, you know, eating dense food, the meat. Uh, drinking, dr you know, alcohol, any drugs, sex, you know, if you can, you know, take a break for just 60 hours or 48 hours, you know, it can really benefit your, your body once a month. And it's when the moon comes back to your natal sun. It's really important to do that. So Aries, you'll be up to bat, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to kind of replenish and re-cleanse. Okay. Something to think about. Try it. Uh, it's really helpful. I've done it. And I find it to be beneficial. So Mercury, Scorpio is moving along. You see uh, Lilith. Um, now it's, you know, before the sun. Before it was after. But still in the conjunction. This Libra sun, you know, in that Gemini deacon. It's also in the, uh, I believe that's in the North Node Lunar Mansion. So, you know, there, there's definitely this energy of transactions, uh, acquisitions, uh, bargaining, contracts, negotiations, that you've got to trust your gut. You've got to listen to know if this is the right deal for you. You know what I mean? Not saying don't make a deal, but just really trust and listen to your intuition to know that you're divinely guided <clears throat> and that um, the Lilith can be that internal roadmap to tap into your intuition and be like, you know what? I got to walk away from this. This, this. this relationship, this deal, this negotiation, this contract is not whatever it is. This apartment, this mortgage is not working for me. And sometimes we can't try to please others and bring disharmony to ourselves because <clears throat> we don't want to rock the boat. Okay? That's a lesson Libra needs to learn. And, um, you know, you got to consider yourself first in those situations. The moon also was coming off that square to Jupiter early in the morning while you, or really while you're sleeping. Okay, and um, the one thing I would say, just be careful, there could be some rem remnants of the, the flooding. This Pisces moon conjunct Neptune, and there's been things in other parts of the world, in, um, I think in the Sub-Saharan Desert, in Mexico, flooding, and other storms, other places, not just, you know, um, Amer America, okay, so this Pisces moon conjunct Neptune, there could definitely be some more events going on, um, you know, in the world stage around uh, deception, 
but around extreme weather and flooding, okay? So just be mindful of that. And um, yeah, we're still dealing with the Libra Sun squaring Mars and the Venus Uranus. So that opposition in that square, there can definitely be some things going on, not only real estate, stock market, a lot of dips, fluctuations and changes. Um, just diversify. I did stay at a Holiday Inn last night, but I, I would say that, you know, this is the time, you know, and I got to do it too, get some gold and silver, but just um, pay attention to the finances. You know, with Pluto here in Capricorn until November 19th, anything can happen. I really believe anything is on the table. And, you know, right before Election Day, Mars is opposing Pluto November 3rd and 4th. That could be very explosive, boombastic. I, I have not tapped in or tuned in to seeing an election. You know, I'm um, not saying there won't be one. There can be. But I, I, I do think there's going to be a lot of events and controversies leading up to, prelude to it the day of and then after, okay? This is not gonna be some regular energy or things. And we may have candidates or vice president candidates being switched out still, or, you know, something happening and not, and, you know, thankfully they stopped another potential assassination attempt, uh, you know, in, in Coachella, California with, with Trump the other night. So. Uh, I don't know. It, it's really wild. Um, we need to protect Kamala and, and, and Donald. And, um, you know, pray for them. You may not like this one. You may not like that one. But we're still, for the most part, I think, dealing with human beings. And, and we have to be civil and, and really seek compassion, empathy, harmony, and peace. All right. Let's get to Wednesday, October 16th. Astro Weather Week report. If you know why I'm laughing, then you know. Biggie Astrology. Pew. All right. Wake up Wednesday, the day of Mercury. Da, 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 da. Well, Mercury's in Scorpio, so you know it's all like intense and hyped up. And oh my God, you see the Venus trying Neptune opposite Uranus Mercury is at the fourth degree Scorpio um, yeah this is a <laughs> definitely deep investigation the moon is now oh my gosh and this is Wednesday that's a good day to do some deep breath work and journaling and investigate, do your own research. So the Aries moon is conjunct the Aries north node. And what do we say? We finished up around three, four on the west coast. So yeah, the Aries moon's at 12 degrees. So, you know, it's pulling away from that conjunction, but it, I mean, it's still in the conjunction and it will be all morning. Um, you know, and probably you'll feel it to about two. Uh, you'll feel it, you know, most of the day. So this Aries moon is in the lunar mansion of the south node. It, it could really want some spirituality. But you can feel emotionally a push on Wednesday to send that email for a connection, to invite on the podcast guests, to <clears throat> book with an agent, to go for your audition as an actor, to initiate things you know conversations at work with your boss your co-workers um go for that raise or promotion you know you're like hey we're in the last quarter you know i i need a little bonus or something you know or increase in pay i've been working hard all year you know or asking for extra vacation time for the holidays you know stuff like that Biggie needs a vacation. 
I need some more clients so I can go on a family vacation too sometimes, you know. I need to take some time off and rest. <clears throat> but the Aries moon will finish up at around 18 degrees, um, 19 on the West Coast. And so, you know, you're going to have it, you know, You know, it's at 7.26 a.m. So, you know, we'll finish up with the Taurus moon on Thursday later, okay? But this right here is definitely, you know, a Wednesday where you can get into some explosive arguments and intense emotions. You know, it's definitely... It's headed towards, you know, the T-square, which we'll see on Thursday with Mars. Um, the Aries moon is also, you see the Lilith. Yeah, it's opposing the Lilith because that's jumping around. It will, you'll feel that. And so the I versus the we. You're going to have to balance on, on, on Wednesday in your communications if you're dominating or take control of communications, right? I think Valeria Sophia broke that down really well with the Libra Mercury energy talking about, you know, trying to create harmony and peace. And, and you know, Libras are great listeners, but when you got the Aries moon, it's it's more about the emotions and they can be pretty impulsive in Aries. I'm not saying Aries moon is a terrible placement. I'm just saying you, as you um, initiate, when it's opposing the Lilith and Libra, you've also got to be willing to look at your Libra house and see where you can intuitively check into your root chakra and your instincts, um, find that emotional balance there could be some explosive things coming out Wednesday around relationships, you know, divorces, um, you know, more Diddy fallout. Um, really look for that. I think that's going to be strong this week, whether there's more people charged or if other names, you know, get brought out in other ways. You know, there's there's just so much. I'm not going to say all the names, but there, there's a, a lot of big time people, but you know, they also have to go after the, the power brokers. Diddy's a small fish, even though you may think he's a big fish. Um, it's way bigger than him. We're getting into medical, political, pharmaceutical, royal. I mean, you know, bigger celebrities than Diddy. It, it, it's uh, it's a darkness that's being revealed. We don't know if they're ever going to get in real trouble or do time, but the public shaming um, will hopefully you know get us to wake up to understand to really understand that your friend that maybe the conspiracy there is was right all along, and you need to. I, although a lot of people will never apologize to them. You need to recognize and understand or understand that there is a lot of demonic energy and a lot of, you know, um, essays and, 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 you know, trafficking and stuff. And we just got to lift up and pray for the children of the world, too. So that Libra sun Mars square still continues. And... Um, it's going to dance all the way till Thursday for this grand cardinal cross with Pluto, Sun, Moon, and Mars. So this is an energy you're really going to feel all week, okay? And, um, you know, it could be around the emotional security in a, in a relationship or even in trusting you know, that your kids are safe at school and different things like that. Um, I don't know why I just got this vision that, you know, 
Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, there may be some some sort of like um, school or mass. Uh, I hate to even say it out loud, mass pew pewing. Um, <clears throat> so let's just pray, okay? Love and peace. We're gonna look at uh, Thursday a little bit later. We'll do 2 p.m. Eastern. See the after effects of the eclipse and all that stuff of the airy super full moon. It's too far away for the eclipse. It's about, you know, 19, 18 degrees away. So, but um, enjoy the Wednesday. Lungs, writing, journaling. <clears throat> Go for a walk, jump rope, work the lymphatic system. I got to do my exercises I do every morning, rubbing the whole lymphatic tract from below the ear to the neck, the collarbone, you know, hitting the underarms, the, you know, in the, in the fold of the elbow, behind the knees, and get the lymph moving. That's your waist system. You got to keep it moving. Got to move that body. Okay. And that Aries moon was squaring Ceres and, and will be part of the Super full moon squaring Pluto. All right, Astro weather for Wednesday the 16th. Let's get to Thursday, the Aries super full moon. Bombastic big astrology. Psh. All right. Big E Astrology, Thursday, October 7th. Happy Aries, super full moon. Put your crystals out Wednesday night. And what we're looking at here, Don Juan. What we're looking at, oh, my, the Mets, not my Mets. The Mets lost, the Giants lost. My Steelers won, they beat the Raiders. Uh, I forgot who's playing Thursday night football this week. Should be a, a good game. I feel like it was somebody. I don't know. I can't for some reason. I just can't remember. But Jets Bills played Monday night. So this is Thursday. We're looking at <clears throat> 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. And so that Aries super full moon has already passed. And. <clears throat> It is finishing up. Let's see, 28. So, two. Around 6 p.m. Eastern. It's going to go into Taurus. So, you'll have the Taurus moon Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Taurus, Gemini moon weekend. Okay. So. Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, there is super full moon, watch my video, but I would say that, you know, we're really pushed energetically and karmically, you know, we also have that trine of, of Venus, Neptune, and Mars and Cancer. Mars is involved in the square, Grand Cardinal Cross, I mean, and also in the trine of Venus and Neptune. So it's like through your spiritual discipline, you can really uh, tap into wh where you where you're being pushed to not be a victim, find your spiritual tribe, but initiate the the comforts, the protection, the safety, and the transformation in your own life. It's been go time, and we're dealing with spiritual warfare. World War Three has already been happening. We're trying to keep away World War Four, but you've got to be a participant in an active participant. You know, you can't go to Ukraine or Gaza to help people, but you can help them being a spiritual and prayer warrior. You can help them with vibrating and positivity and, and sending love and positive words of peace to anywhere in the world. So it's it's very abstract and obtuse and it's not like on your fingertips but you don't have to sit and just soak in the negative news you can go into the you know the spiritual realms and and get into the the field and 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 take 
take a part, initiate, take part of being the solution. Pointing out problems doesn't do us anything in life if you're not a, a problem solver and, and, and fi finding out the answers and, and, and solutions. So let's, let's, let's focus on that and see how, um, really how brave and, and powerful we are as a society, as a collective. We, we are the, the aliens. We are these spiritual beings. We are powerful. So please don't negate who you really are, who, you know, Yahuwah made you to be, who Yeshua told you you are. You are the Christ, you know, and it's not like being blasphemous. That's what, you know, Jesus wanted us to all emulate his journey and his life and be Christ-like, be like him. Okay. And he, you know, went on that spiritual journey and lived in Egypt and, you know, went to India and, and did all the, this work to be an ascended master, you know? So, tap into that. Really tap into that. This um, Aries moon, the lunar mansion behind it, is the, um, is the sun. So shine bright like a diamond on Thursday. It's, it's going to, you know, finish up. Let's see. It'll finish up at around three degrees, two or three degrees Taurus. Okay. So, you know, as the night ends, definitely feel very grounded in your physical body. And that Taurus moon will oppose Mercury and Scorpio as you're going to bed Thursday night. And just recognize where we've got to kind of find that balance of the physical and spiritual realm. And right now you can feel like you're losing people that you love and care for in the 3D because you just can't relate or vibrate. I, I listen, the, we were going to the football game and kids wanted to hear some hype music and what they were listening to was terrible and I put on some DMX to get hype. But even that, you know, I used to love it. And now I'm just like, oh, this is, this is too low vibrational for me. And I'm not, I'm not judging. I'm just saying that like, when you put in the work, like you can't listen to, you need to be changed, right? You need to be like, it should bother you to hear violence and, and negativity and, and uh, negative in the music. That's a, it's polluting your subconscious mind. You really do want high frequency, high vibration, 432, 536, you know, like the, the, the sound therapy and sound frequency and color, everything is energy, everything is frequency, everything is vibration. So just think about that as you're grounding into the Taurus moon, maybe even go for a Thursday night walk. It's Jupiter, move your hips and thighs, do a little dance for the Aries super full moon, 7.26 a.m. Eastern, 4.26 a.m. Pacific. So put your crystals out Wednesday night. And, um, and have a great uh, super full moon. Remember the sun is, you know, trining uh, Jupiter and Gemini. So that, that does make it a little softer in the, the combative energy. And Jupiter trining the sun is like that opportunity to change your beliefs, your philosophies with new information and new knowledge that it's okay to not follow the herd and the tribe that you you can bring them new information and new data you could bring them new insights to see through the chaos and confusion of this daily routine of this world let them know that when you're switching from the piscean age to the age of aquarius it's a little bumpy and rocky but everything's going to be all right we are going to have free energy energy we are going to have uh, equality. We are going to have peace. 
And if you don't want to be a part of that world, then I don't, I don't know what to say. But I thirst for it. And that's what I'm here for, for this awakening. Okay? So, but sometimes the, you know, Mercury and Venus, Scorpio, Mercury, Scorpio, we've got to see the ugly truth. So then we, guess what? Yeah, it's like hard to fathom and hard to believe, but it's been happening. But you need to know the truth so that way you don't get deceived going forward ever again in the future. You need the divine revelation to be like, wow, everything was part of this matrix system and it's okay for it to crumble. It's okay to, to rebuild, you know, better and to be more fair and more equal for, for all mankind. I mean, this is almost that time to get some sort of utopia, you know, which is, it's a false thing, but it's not false to live in peace and harmony. It's not false to understand your own superpowers. It's not false to know that families, women, and children are safe and protected. It's, it's getting back in the, the divine energetic balance of the divine masculine, divine feminine, of how it should be. Okay, we should all be walking around on that energy of being many gods and being godlike, because in that way we wouldn't be disrespecting, taking more than we need, taking care of the of Gaia, Mother Earth, and one another. It would prick your heart and soul. You would never walk past another homeless person and not give or help them or give them knowledge, food, shelter, inspiration. You would have to pause in your day and address it because it would be so bizarre to you. Does that make sense? I know in New York City and the homeless, you know, the trains, I would, I would always help out or give people stuff. And if I didn't, I would say a prayer or say, God bless you. You know, it's going to get better. All right, y'all. So enjoy this Pisces, Aries, Taurus, Moon, Astro Weather Week. Um, reach out. Any questions? My moon tracking service, $170. 65 minutes over Zoom, learning the moon in each sign in each house. Every two and a half days, it changes 60 hours. And we go through the natal chart and you receive recordings of the moon and all 12 signs and all 12 houses. But you ask live questions and I break down for you, like really how the moon, which represents your emotional mind, your body, health, intuition, the family you create, your mother, um, how you know it will affect your moods your mental cycle your your personality like who you who you be who you are every two and a half days we go through a full 12 house month cycle it's it's a beautiful service i'm proud of it hit me up you can book it online at biggieastrology.com any questions for that coffee talk libra birth chart sale eric at biggieastrology.com have a good thursday Great time to sign up for Coffee Talk. Two hours, $20, which will be on Saturday, October 19th. Pisces North Node, Virgo South Node. 12 noon Eastern. It's a big transit. You don't want to miss Coffee Talk. All right. I love you. Enjoy the Astro Weather Week. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll sum it all up on the outro. Pew! That's the Astro Weather Weekly Report. I'm Eric Taylor, Big Astrology. Nice to meet you. If I haven't met you yet, comment down below. If I don't know you, you want to share your big three, ask me questions about the weather, the Pisces, Aries, Taurus, Moon. Um, listen, you got this, but it's time. Put love and intention into your body into your water right talk to your water i love you water right talk to your plants your trees discipline is love be disciplined with your children don't spoil them with yes 
It's okay to say no to the universe, to your children, to yourselves. What you may think is a, a denial is, is really just what's needed, right? We live in a Saturnian bubble matrix. Saturn restricts things, limits, delays it, because you've got to put in the discipline and hard work first. And then when you do, you get greater rewards from Saturn than you ever can from Jupiter or Venus. <laughs> Sometimes no is a bigger yes than the yes, yes, yes of Venus and Jupiter. Do you get that? There's nothing to fear in astrology. Fear not being a disciplined uh, soul and being. Because the lack of discipline will have you on the road of perdition, will have you you know, in the depths of the darkness and, and, and confused and, and making huge mistakes. We have to delay instant gratification. I explain that to my boys all the time. The minute you feel hunger, doesn't mean you need to go grab something to eat. That's part of the process of detoxifying. You're gonna see Pluto does that. Pluto's virus, Neptune's disease. When Pluto goes to Aquarius, it's going to purge, bring up, release, detoxify. Things around the science, technology, freedom, liberation. A lot of people are going to get liberated in the next 20 years. But that that that's at a price and a cost, and it's 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 going to be deep. All right. So Astro Weather Week, hit me up. Libras, birth chart sale, coffee talk. Eric at BigEastrology.com. And I uh, look forward to seeing you Friday with Astro Weather. I'll be releasing, uh, I'll be live Friday night. I'm going to try to come live Wednesday night, but I'll definitely be live Friday night with Priya Sudarsanam. That'll be either 256 or 257. Um, unmute with Priya and talking about the energy work that she does and really empowering you to heal yourselves, right? The cellular memory, it, it, it knows what it needs. We just got to activate it. I love you. Astro of the Week, Eric Taylor. October 14th, 15th, 16th. And listen, Thursday, October 16th will be the third year anniversary of me awakening. The 13th yesterday was the first time, day 37, that I woke up and I was put in restraints because I was just trying to wipe my brow and they didn't want to bother to look. Um, yeah, a lot of bad things happened. A lot of things that shouldn't have happened, happened in the hospital. They were trying to take your boy out, but you know, God had another plan. Eric Taylor had another plan. Okay. <laughs> so, but yeah, Thursday, third year anniversary of my awakening from 40 days, 40, four zero in coma so when I tell you certain things please believe I don't believe I know knowledge is love eternal life and we are more powerful than you could ever imagine I know my power Astro Weather Week Libra Season Big e Astrology Later so you're welcome, son. I spit rhymes for 2111. Lifting up your soul, so you're not stuck on. Oh.